Is Hogwarts Legacy boring? Personally, I played 100 hours of it, so obviously I don't agree with this point of view completely, but after my last video was caressed by the magic touch of the almighty algorithm, many viewers said that they found it so. So I wanted to find out why. Let me explain. The reason I went out of my way to find opinions I disagree with is because I have to consider the fact that maybe I'm blindsided by how much I like the game. Just because the overall reception of a game is good, it does not mean that all negative feedback should be ignored. There's value to negative opinions regarding Hogwarts Legacy, and who knows, if by lucky chance a developer ends up stumbling upon my video, maybe they can discuss it and implement changes in the future. I started by filtering out the positive from the negative comments on my review video, which was the easy part, and then I set out on a scavenger hunt on Reddit in order to find the clearest and well thought out criticisms of the game that even though are negative, are also reasonable. The most reasonable I found are the following three that you see on the screen. Now let's start with the main story. The main story had a lot of criticism amongst these reviews and I tend to agree with them. To me, the part that lacks the most in the game is the story. How? Well, the reason as to why I believe Harry Potter was such a successful series is because of how much substance it had, which would particularly shine through the character development. This is especially important if you want to make the characters relatable and multifaceted, by making them possess obvious qualities and faults. Harry was noble, brave and kind, but sometimes quite arrogant and hurtful. Hermione, while empathic and clever, as Snape says, arguably an insufferable know-it-all. And then Ron, while funny, loyal and witty, could at times be quite immature and have the emotional range of a teaspoon. That's where Hogwarts Legacy fails, at least most of the time. The villains of this game, Renrock and Victor Rookwood, are the most bland, one-dimensional, and unseasoned characters they could have ever come up with. It feels like a Disney story where the bad guy is very clearly the bad guy and you know where the story is going to lead you. You are going to be the hero that saves the day and that's the easiest prediction anyone could have ever made. The side storylines, particularly Sebastian Sallow's, would have been the perfect main story. It's the most Harry Pottery thing ever. Friends at first looking to help each other, go to extreme lengths and end up becoming enemies. Or so it could have been. It would have been the perfect setting. There's friendship, there's muddled morals, and the perfect premise of to what extent would you go to save someone you love? Would you betray a friend? Would you hurt? Would you kill? Would you subscribe to my YouTube channel? Just go ahead and hit the subscribe button real quick. Thanks. Love you. But instead, we got a cookie cutter version of a story which does the job, but just leaves so much to desire. Even presuming if we went with the whole Isadora story, why is it not her that we fought? Why was her portrait burned? It would have been such an amazing story if Isadora's portrait was still intact and would try to get us to understand her side of the story. Maybe we will see more of a fleshed out and complex story in a future DLC. But for now, we can only hope. As you're probably aware, this game is an open world RPG. And although that has the potential for a great game, it also has a great potential for a boring one. I usually don't love open world games and end up finding them monotonous after just a few hours of gameplay, however, I don't think that's the case for Hogwarts Legacy. The game, however, suffers from one thing, repetition. Repetition itself is not a problem. The problem is how much repetition is too much repetition. Well, I'd say exactly 95 Merlin trials too many. There are two things that people were generally upset about, too few mini games but too many instances of those same minigames or collectibles. Like I've mentioned before, there are 95 Merlin trials, 114 treasure vaults, and 236 field guide pages. But then we only get 3 broom riding challenges and 3 dueling arenas both with one level of challenge? Although collecting items and exploring the world can be fun, the things I've mentioned are just overall a bit excessive. I can't help but feel that the effort they have put into those very same minigames, if applied where it would have mattered most, could have made for a game that would have been far more replayable. And let's face it, open world games are not for everybody. But this is not Hogwarts Legacy's fault. The same way that not everyone likes strategy games, battle royales, survival games, not everyone has the time and temperance for an open world game and people need to realize that and accept it. Like I've said before, I'm usually one of those people. Unless I don't find the world boring and if I'm invested enough in the story. I stopped playing Horizon Zero Dawn after 4 hours for those very same reasons. I never finished Middle Earth Shadow of Mordor and I would have never even dared to go 2 feet near Death Stranding. Ew. But then again, I love Elden Ring and Hogwarts Legacy. These are two completely different games which I love for completely different reasons but they are appealing enough to me to keep me in trance for hundreds of hours. I love Hogwarts Legacy because it's what I always wanted PlayStation 1 Harry Potter to look and feel like. In many ways, it even felt that way back in 2001 when I was a little shit of a child. But then, there's Elden Ring, which I adore because it's a mysterious world and you find out the lore by either reading items or, 
well, let's be honest, most likely watching Vati video. And most appealing of all, the game is hard. It taught me that through struggle, victory is that much more rewarding, which I've even applied to my very own philosophy while going through my day-to-day -day life. Now, it's okay that people don't love Hogwarts Legacy, find it repetitive and boring. It's a matter of taste, but before criticizing the game, there's an important question I believe players need to ask themselves. Do I not find the game enjoyable because it is boring, or do I not find the game enjoyable because I'm not its target audience? Only you know the answer. Lastly, Hogwarts Legacy is not revolutionary. Although I agree, does it need to be? I don't think so. If all games were aiming to be revolutionary, none of them would because that would just then become the standard. After reading countless comments, articles and reddit threads regarding this game, one thing becomes clear. Many people did not have realistic expectations for this game. This is even something I was worried about before the game came out. When there's a huge fandom and hype, the potential for high expectations is immense and therefore, if those expectations are then not met, the greater the disappointment. We see loads of minigames, side quests, collectibles and challenges in Hogwarts Legacy and none of them are crazy inventive. They might be unique to its game, but they are no different from anything you could find in other games of its genre. But the priorities of a video game should be to be fun first and ambitious second and when it comes to this, the developers hit the mark. Maybe not with everyone but with the most people it did. This game wasn't just targeted at your average quote-unquote elite gamer, it was targeted at a Harry Potter fans too, that maybe don't care about having three fucking billion things to do in the game after they're done, or a similar experience to other games. Most people just care about having their money's worth out of something, and let's imagine you played 60 hours of this game and it cost you $60 to get it. That's an average of $1 per hour. Assuming you're having fun the whole time, then I dare argue you've had your money's worth out of it. Not all games need to be an Elden Ring or Breath of the Wild. All they need is to be entertaining and to make you forget about life for a little while. If you disagree with the points I've highlighted in this video, that's okay. I don't have an issue with people disagreeing with me. The aim of my videos, first and foremost, is to make people think. I might change some minds or I might not, but that's not my business. I loved it when you guys took your opinions to the comments and challenged not only me, but other viewers on their opinions and gave your two cents in exchange. I'd rather have a viewership that can discuss ideas rather than one that eats up my opinions and accepts them as absolute truth. Discussing ideas and providing feedback is fundamental if we want to see a better follow-up game or DLCs. I'm willing to bet that the developers collect feedback from all social media in order to get back to us with an even better game. At least, I hope so.